I remember my mom and grandma in the kitchen making jam, canning peaches, homemade applesauce. The art of food preservation is something I don't want to lose. I want to pass it on to my kids. So I asked to meet Chef Ernest Miller, who's a master food preserver. He has the answers on how to preserve and enjoy produce year round. Chef Miller, we have all these examples here of preserved foods. We've got the jams, the canned tomato juice, and we have fermented food. I think that the fermentation is really interesting because it's not usually the first thing people think about when they think about preserving food. But from what you say, it's really easy and very healthy too. Absolutely. The health benefits are enormous. The fermented foods are actually healthier than the raw foods. Well, because of the bacterial action that does the fermentation, mm -hmm. the bacteria are not only preserving the food, okay. but they're creating vitamins. They're pre-digesting the food and making some of the nutrients more readily available to our bodies. Very cool. So today, we're gonna start with a simple fermentation recipe, which is sauerkraut. Well, there's only three ingredients for any lacto-fermentation. Okay. Salt water and the vegetable. It's a very simple procedure. We're just gonna go ahead and very finely uh, cut the cabbage. We're gonna take the core of the cabbage out and then we're gonna finely chop it. So we've shredded our cabbage. Okay. We're gonna weigh it and then weigh out the salt that we add to it, which okay. I've already done. Uh, and just sprinkle the salt right on the cabbage. And I like to add some caraway seed, some celery seed and mustard seed. So we've tossed our, our cabbage with our salt and our spices. Okay. And now we're ready to put it into our fermentation vessel. Glass, ceramic, uh, or stainless steel, or food safe plastic. Okay. Uh, I prefer glass. So that's just water? Uh, it's actually brine, uh, salt water. So how much salt to water in the brine? One ounce of salt per quart of water. Okay. And now I'm putting a little weight uh, on the sauerkraut. We want to make sure that the sauerkraut is below the level of the brine. How long does it take for the fermentation process to occur? About two weeks. Oh, but that's not bad. No, but, um, but there's no sauerkraut please. So some people like their cabbage <laughs> a little fermented, so maybe just after one week, or yeah. they want to let it go for a month okay. or longer and get it as sour as possible. And is this a finished product right here? Absolutely. This is some of our finished sauerkraut. It's way different than the sauerkraut you buy in the store. It's surprisingly simple to be able to do this. I feel like I'm back in my grandmother's kitchen. Thank you so much for giving me all this great information today. You're absolutely welcome. Come back anytime. If you want to learn more about food preservation and get some great recipes, visit thepurebar.com.